Today, me and my friend Eris will be spending 100 days in Terraria because she's never actually been in the game. Well, let me explain. She told me she's only ever been in the game in normal mode in version 1.3, four years ago. So, we spent 100 days in Terraria co-op so she can experience what it's like to be Terraria the proper way. And by proper way, I mean anything that isn't normal mode because normal mode doesn't count. But I will say, this video was a bit of a nightmare to make because my PC died and I lost a script where I kept track of everything and all the editing progress I had. So I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel more than you can imagine and allows me to put in all the time and effort I did into this. And I probably wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. Also, I'm gonna link Eris' channel down in the description even though she doesn't really upload anything yet. Now, without further ado, we need to make our character and our world. We're gonna be making a small world in Expert and Crimson, the way God intended. Now let's hop in into day one. The first day played out like any other first day. I got to chopping out wood and began exploring the left side of the world. I also asked Eris if she could make the base instead of me having to make it because I kind of wanted to see what she could come up with. I ended up running into a cave where I got to mining materials and ended up finding the jungle biome. I didn't really go into the jungle though and mostly just mined around it until a battle smarted me. Ah! Oh no. Well, at least we can go back and see what the base looks like. Looks great. We made an actual base and then I upgraded my pickaxe. The first night didn't go too well since zombies somehow broke into the house. <laughs> sorry. It played for you. Sorry, sorry. It played for your death. Oops. We were forced to stay on the roof for the night until we dealt with the zombies. Ah, I can't move it. Oh, this guy's gonna butter in his head. Wait, they're going after you. Why do they hate me? Guide, oh, guide, 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 guide. I can't. They get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Day 2 came on us before we even noticed, so I head back to the jungle, and this time I used bombs to mine more effectively, and got to opening chests. I'm also using a texture pack I forgot to disable these first few days, so jungle items may look a bit different. While mining, I ran into the skeleton merchant, so I was able to buy a lot of bombs by selling anything valuable I had on me, and I ended up finding our first life crystal. We got our first life crystal. Ah! I'm dead. I mostly focus on collecting spores that only appear in the jungle because you can make great armor and weapons with them. But since I was just mostly exploring, I ended up arriving in hell. At night, I returned to the base. And since we already had our first blood moon, we decided to spend some time working on a basement. On day three, I got to exploring the surface because I wanted to find an enchanted sword shrine and not have to put any effort into getting weapons. But I didn't have any luck. Although I did end up finding the dungeon, and because there was a bit of water on the roof, this oh, usually really? means there's a sky island right above it. So I was able to climb using ropes and only got a horseshoe. We ended up arriving to the ocean. You can actually find some pretty useful stuff here early on, but I ended up dying before I could open the chest. Give me the chest, give me the chest, give me the chest, give me the chest, I'm right there, I'm right there. Uh, uh, no. Since we didn't really find anything else, we upgraded our pickaxes and got to working on a elevator. Look at this bunny. Out of the way. <laughs> oh yeah, house. We ended up having Hermes boots and Eris kept them, even though I, I found a chest. We also found a mushroom biome, where we found a magic mirror, spelunker potions, one trident, an ice summon, and some life crystals. We were also able to make hooks and continued mining until we ran into a trap chest. I realized it was trapped and got rid of the explosives, but uh... Alright, we're good to ball. <laughs> oh, we're no, no, we weren't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On day 4, I asked Eris to let me borrow her Hermes boots so I could use a gravitation potion to find the rest of the Sky Islands. I found the balloon, the Star Fury, and did a drive-by to the Crimson, where I used bombs I had left to break the Crimson Hearts and get a gun. I ended up arriving at the ocean and looted both water chests, and did the same thing for the other side of the world. I finished off the day by beginning to build a new house for new NPCs to move in. It took all of day 5, but I built 5 new houses for 5 NPCs. That's not what I built. It took all of day 5, but I made a house that 5 NPCs could move into. And a tree that connects the two houses. With a nice swing you can use when you're bored. Or you're watching one of my videos. On day 6, there was a goblin invasion. Because I forgot to tell Eris to not go over 200 HP. Which is one of the requirements for them spawning. So that's kind of on me. I decided to just use a lava bucket. Because it's pretty effective. They just kind of walk towards your direction. Nice. God damn. At night, 
<laughs> at night we got to working on a small arena and after buying a bunch of bullets from the arms dealer we got to fighting yaya cthulhu here we go did i not make the world an expert what's going on maybe you're just used to expert i definitely noticed a difference maybe you're right oh nice oh i star hit it <laughs> oh we are an expert Using the crimping ore the eye dropped, we made the Magiluminescence, an item added in the Don't Starve crossover that gives you a small bonus in movement speed and also gives a bit of light. And that's pretty much all we made. On day 7, the Dryad moved in, so I bought a bunch of pumpkin seeds from her and got to planting them. Once they grow, we'll be able to make pumpkin pie. I also bought some planter boxes for planting seeds and some flowers for the movement speed. After that, I got to searching for Hermes boots, which I ended up finding pretty quick in the jungle. And since I was already in the jungle, I decided to stay for longer and collect as many life crystals as I could. I ended up exploring so much that I reached the border of the world. But I kept mining and found a Klarna bottle on day 8. And the goblin. I was finally able to combine accessories, like the cloud in a bottle and the balloon to make a cloud in a balloon. My Hermes and Rockets boots to make Spectre boots. And I didn't combine the Lucky Horseshoe with the balloon because I didn't remember if I would still be able to use it in case I wanted to make the bundle of balloons. After collecting all the pumpkins that had grown, the demolitionist moved in. I used the pumpkins for pumpkin pie, which give you a bonus to pretty much all stats. And then I planted some more. Later that day, we head to the Crimson to face off against the brain and try to get crimptain and tissue sample. Here we go. There it is. Right side. Watch out. Ah. Uh. Oh no! Watch out! Get the get the house! Get the house! No! Oh! On day nine, I returned to collect everything the brain had dropped, and then returned to the base where I made pickaxes for the both of us. So naturally, the next step is to work on the base more. All right, fine. We need to mine hellstone, but for that, we first need to finish the elevator. We actually made a lot of progress on the elevator, and we're almost done with it. But I didn't feel like moving, and I died. Oh no! On day ten, I got to harvesting the plants using the staff of regrowth. I placed a few more planter boxes and a tad little bit of water we can use for water bottle. Having made spelunker potions, I head to the underground desert to collect life fruits. And because I was looking for an ancient chisel. But before finding the chisel, I found the thunder sapper, a bass statue, ah. the gopher, a bass statue, God a bass it, statue, ba a hard crystal, a bass statue, and finally an ancient chisel. Oh my god, I got it! Increases mining speed by 25% next to a bass statue. And for some reason, Queen Bee attacked us. Uh oh. Why did you do this? Accident. Here she comes! Down the elevator! Go down the elevator! Go down the elevator! Ah! I got stuck <laughs> on the rope! <laughs> oh. Now that I was back at the base, I placed the four bass statues in the arena for the extra defense. And no, they, they don't stack. Day 10 also marked the start of my search for the shimmer biome. While mining, I finally got my health up to 400. And by day 11, I had found quite a lot of stuff. And returned to the base, where I placed a bunch of chests floating above the house for... Who knows why, I just placed them there for some reason. I also got back to searching for the shimmer. While mining, I collected an angel statue that I wanted to throw in the shimmer biome for the monolith. Y you'll see what it does later. I also collected two anglets, another cloud in a bottle, a bunch of heart crystals, and picked up a fire blossom in hell. This whole time, Eris had been farming for the obsidian rose, but still hadn't gotten one. Returning to the base, I gave Eris some life crystals and a cloud in a bottle. I also made an obsidian skin potion and got to collecting obsidian using bombs. And after that, with the help of Eris, we got to collecting hellstone. On day 12, we used all the hellstone we had collected to make hellstone bars. Molten armor and a hellstone pickaxe. Ran out of obsidian, collected more obsidian, made the fire imp staff and bows. Hey, we're looking pretty fresh if I do say so myself. You piece of sh. And we decided to try our new fresh gear against the brain because we didn't beat it last time and we barely beat it now. <laughs> nice. Yippee! With the brain defeated, we now have the brain of confusion that gives us a chance to dodge enemy attacks. It's the best accessory there is, if you don't count the ones that are better than- Returning to the base, I did a bit of plant harvesting, which I won't be mentioning anymore in the future, but just know I do it whenever I get the chance. I spent the rest of day 12 flattening land to expand the arena, while Eris was still trying to get an obsidian rose. 
on day 13 slime began falling from the sky so we just caught a bunch of slimes until king slime finally showed up oh he's here oh he's here where oh here he comes oh i don't swing fast enough for the anger i feel inside of me victory that lagged my game victory <gasps> oh hey Eris seemed to like the slime pet that had shown up, so I showed her how to get another one, but that's about all the effort I'm putting into collecting slimes. We spent the rest of day 13 and a bit of day 14 working on the Wall of Flesh arena and trying to get the Obsidian Rose with no luck. After working on this arena for a while, we got to working on a new arena, one for Skeletron. We mainly used dirt so we could turn this into a tree farm. Returning to the base, I made some clothes because I looked them and also made a few potions because... Oh wait, we'll go this way. Okay, the nurse is there. So if you're low in health, just teleport her. Okay. There you go. He's going after you. He doesn't like you. Why doesn't he like me? That's not very nice. Okay, we, we got him. We can now access the dungeon. We can get a lot of useful things from here. But the one thing I really wanted was the Muramasa. So of course, before I got the Muramasa, I got... The Aqua Scepter, the Water Candle, the Cobalt Shield, the Alchemy Table, so we can make potions now, that's pretty good actually. A dumb yo-yo. Aerith found the Water Bolt. It turned into day 15, we rescued the mechanic, bought a bunch of teleporters and wires. I cost out all my money, so I had to sell back the wires. Got a real human gun that shoots real bullets. The Bewitching Table to summon more minions. The Aqua Scepter and a Purple Key. The Cobalt Shield and the Purple Key. And finally, the Muramasa. Hey, I found it! And then I died. While we were in the dungeon, the traveling merchant had arrived. So I bought a bunch of Dynasty wood from him. And got back to mining Hellstone once more. Because I wanted to make two volcanoes. Or Molten Furies. One for Eris and one for me. Because I'm gonna be making the Knight's Edge. For the next sword we need, I need to head to the jungle. Where I got to collecting stingers. While Eris was using the purple key to open shadow chest in hell. While exploring, I ended up finding a moving chest. Hey, I saw that chest move. What the hell? And I made the decision to not rescue whatever is inside. Which was a decision that would haunt me for the rest of the playthrough. By day 16, I had collected everything I needed to make the blade of grass. I already had everything in the base needed to make the blood butcher. So I head to the crimson and made the knife's head. I also reforged it until I got a good modifier on it. Oh, hey, superior, I'll take that. With my new best friend, the Knight's Edge, I head to Hell to try and get the Obsidian Rose. But I got distracted because Eris was golfing and I wanted to join. <laughs> yeah, you made a golf course. It's very boring. Wait, I want to golf. How do you golf? Nothing. Uh, you need a golf club from the guy. It's over there. Oh, what the hell? Up until this point, I hadn't actually golfed before. And since I wasn't good at it, I decided to cheat. I won! Hold in one! <laughs> Hold in one! Oh, I missed. Hold in one! Golf is easy! <laughs> oh, I missed. Hold in one! <laughs> I love golf! I love golf! I also realized we could get a golf cart by doing a lot of golfing. But because the score you get is determined by distance, I placed a bunch of golf cups in hell. On day 17, I also placed walls on the elevator. So we can launch the ball from the surface all the way down to hell. And this way, we ended up farming points until we were able to buy the golf cart. But we were only able to afford one, so we found the eye a few times to get some gold. And we now both have golf carts, which are pretty f***ing sick. On day 18, I head back to hell once more to continue farming for the obsidian rose. Rose, 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 rose. Oh! Which I ended up getting pretty much right away. Oh, I got another one. Oh my god! Wait, what? On day 19, I did a bit of mining to search for the aglet. But before I could even find one, I found something else. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, enchanted sword! Oh my god, I'm getting so lucky today. We kept mining non-stop until day 20, where nothing too interesting happened until we stumbled upon something. Wait, what's on here? There's like a bunch of... Oh, it's just like an entrance. Oh! Uh -huh. You found it? You found it? Yeah. I threw in two life crystals and got two vital crystals. They increase life regen permanently, but you can only use it once. I also threw in two mana stars to get the arcane crystal, which does the same thing as the vital crystal, but with mana. After that, I returned home where I bought a bunch of anvils from the merchant and threw them in the shimmer so we could have unlimited iron. 
Oh, this part. Okay, so so NPCs can also be thrown in the shimmer, and they give you a reskin. And I try my best to not look into any updates. I hadn't really seen what the shimmered version of the NPCs looked like, so we wanted to throw in a few, but it did not go well. He found his way to us. What the hell? Where did he come from? Alright, you're going in the water. Do they just stay like that until they die? I guess. Wait, they're just coming out. Oh, never mind. They're turning back. What? Just trap them properly. And then they'll separate on their own. Wow, never mind. <laughs> Wait, what if I put chairs? Oh, it worked. This whole NPC shimmer problem took until day 22. Returning to the base, I had to make more rooms for NPCs to move in. We really had to start working on a main base soon, but we didn't really know what to build. We finished off the day by placing even more planter boxes, and I finally made that monolith I had mentioned a few days ago. Yes. Which turns the background into this. On day 23, there was a goblin invasion, but that's not interesting. You know what is? Fishing. Now that Eris had got to bed, I spent all of day 24, 25, and 26 doing nothing but fishing. It's really boring, so I prefer to do it when other players aren't online. That way, they don't have to sit through this, and neither will you, because here's everything I got. On day 27, Eris rejoined, so we began clearing land to work on a base. We didn't really know what we wanted, but I did recommend we do something slightly underground. So we used a few bombs to blow up some land. On day 28, we head to the jungle and got to building an arena to fight Queen Bee in because I really wanted the Wish Doctor to move in because I wanted to be able to make flasks. We did so well with our insane gear that we managed to beat Queen Bee first try. Nice. Also, apparently they added a new yo-yo to the game, which is a really terrible idea, and they should just remove all of them. I also made the Axe of Regrowth, which is an upgrade to the Staff of Regrowth. I spent the rest of the day pretending to be productive. On day 29, we began work on a new base. We literally just decided to place a bunch of wood at random to try and make a mess that we could still turn into a base somehow. We wanted to make the most unnecessarily complicated and hard to navigate base that could still be functional. Also, full transparency, we spawned in the living room so we could make wood furniture because our world didn't have one. It, it's only for decorations, so it shouldn't affect the game too much. We spent until day 32 working on the new base. At some point, the party girl also moved in, so we threw her in the shimmer. On the night of day 32, we continued working on the base, but we still didn't really know what to do. Until... I was thinking we could maybe turn it into a huge tree. We spent from day 33 till 37 working on this giant tree base. We also expanded the planter box potion area. We also placed NPCs on top of the treehouse so enemies wouldn't spawn whenever we came up here. On day 38, because there was a bunch of sandstorms that were reaching all the way into the base, we decided to just blow up the desert. That way the sandstorm wouldn't reach us anymore. Since we also wanted to build an arena on this side of the base, we really didn't want to have to deal with the sandstorms when we were fighting a boss. So we placed dirt to turn this into a regular forest biome. We mined the meteor that had landed here a while ago that I didn't mention because we didn't even do anything with it. And we got to placing honey and working in the arena. We ended up expanding it all the way to the jungle because of how small it was and then added a third layer of platforms. On the night of day 39, we used the dynamite we had left over from blowing up the desert to clear a bunch of space in the underground to make an underground farm. And guess who showed up? Oh my god, this chest again. It's back. It's like he wants to be rescued or something. Anyways, the farm we made was really small and messy, so it didn't take too long to build, and it's not really the most effective one, but I was really eager to get into hard mode, and it'll do the job. On day 40, because we had a lot of materials to make potions, and now the alchemy station from the dungeon, I finally got around to making as many potions as I could. I bought everything from the mechanic to make the blueprint and set up a new way to enter and leave the base using actuators. This method doesn't let mobs enter or break down the front door because there is no door. After that, we head to hell to face <laughs> off against the wall. Perdón, there wins. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna break that or we're gonna die? You're gonna break that or we're gonna die. You gotta break that or we're gonna die. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> we're gonna die to then. the wall. We're gonna die to the wall. We're gonna die to the wall. These are the consequences of your actions. <laughs> Break it! Break <laughs> it! Break it! You already lost. Break it! Break it! No! 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 <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. Here we go. Oh, we didn't buff! Oh my god! The oh slime. my god! Eris, why? Ah! I don't know. I didn't get it. Why? Break the block! <laughs> Break the block! Oh, Eris! You did not break the block! <laughs> oh my god! It's your fault for placing it. You're, wait, are, you, are you not in blue? Oh, I don't I have am. I don't have wormhole. I don't have wormhole. I had one wormhole. What is it? No. I lost it. No. We had to try again on day 41. But first, we had to make our character look better. I also placed some background to make the area look a bit nicer. After all that, we tried to fight the wall of flesh again. We are now in hard mode, which means we are weak as hell and will die to everything. I broke the demon altars to get the new hard mode ores, and I always like breaking a lot more than I need because it makes mining easier. I also discovered where the hollow was, so I broke a bit of ice that had become hollowed and placed it in the farm for it to spread. The wizard was also here. On day 42, I collected a lot of pink ice blocks from the snow biome and placed it all around the farm to speed up the process of ice and hollow enemies spawning. After a while, we were getting souls and a bunch of useful drops from the hard mode enemies. Eris was now using the legendary sword we got from mob drops. Although I kept using the knight's edge because it was fun. We managed to collect enough souls to make a key light and use that key to spawn a mimic. From the mimic we got a single flying knife. We wanted to farm more mimics for better weapons and gear but on day 43 pirates showed up. We aren't really strong enough to deal with them. So we just kind of sat inside a box and used a flying knife with a flask of fire to deal a bit more damage. We also managed to defeat a pirate ship, which was painstakingly slow. But at least we managed to get... Yay! Oh, come on! <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it? After dealing with the pirates, we got back to farming mimics. We got a hook, another flying knife, and that's it. On day 44, I got to placing crimstone blocks in the farm because I wanted to get souls of darkness and icor. I also had to replace the pink ice because it was conflicting with the crimstone. I ended up spending a few days farming for souls, so I'm just gonna say the important things that happened from day 44 to day 50. I ended up getting rid of some crimstone blocks and replacing it with pink ice again because I wanted to try and get the rod of discord but had no luck. I did get a lot of other items, like a ton of souls of light and dark, mechanical boss spawns that enemies drop, mining gear, food, potions, the philosopher's stone, and whatever else is in these chests. On day 51, the traveling merchant arrived, so we bought a bunch of paintings to place around the base. We then spent the rest of the day farming mimics. Alright, let's see what we got. And because I wanted the hollow biome to spread on the surface, I placed pearlstone blocks around the base and in what was left of the desert biome. For day 51 through day 54, I did a bit more farming. I still really wanted to get the Rod of Discord, but this game knows when you want an item, so I didn't get it. We also killed a traveling merchant to steal his hat, to throw in the shimmer, giving us the traveling merchant satchel. Which makes it so the next time the traveling merchant shows up, he'll sell more items. On day 55, pirates invaded again. So we did the classic strategy of hiding in the same box we used last time. I even managed to find a more effective way to deal with the ship this time, using the Knight's Edge. Still, we didn't get anything useful from it. Hollow enemies were also spawning at this point, so we began killing unicorns when we could. We could use their horns for arrows, and we could kill them for a chance to get the unicorn mount. I also bought a mining helmet to complete my mining gear that lets me mine a lot faster. It's also been like 15 days since we under hard mode and I haven't done any mining. I collected a lot of cobalt to make a pickaxe. And on day 56, I used that cobalt pickaxe to mine mithril to make a pickaxe. We used that mithril pickaxe to mine adamantite. And used the adamantite to make an adamantite furnace. And an adamantite And the adamantite pickaxe. Which you don't actually need. But I just wanted to mine even faster than before. This time I got to mining in the snow biome because I wanted to see if I could find the ice gates. So I could upgrade my boots straight to Terra Spark. 
At this point, I'm just mining because mining at this speed is really fun. On day 57, I made adamantite armor, but hadn't mined enough for two sets, so I kept mining. This whole time, Aerith was farming harpies to get the giant harpy feather, because we still didn't have wings. On day 58, I ran into the skeleton merchant, who happened to sell anklets, so I bought a few. Later that day, while mining in the snow biome, I found the ice skates. When I returned home, I was able to complete one full set of adamantite armor. I was also finally able to upgrade my boots all the way to frost spark. But we still couldn't get terra spark because I never found the water walking boots. After mining all day, I turned every single life crystal I had collected into lanterns and placed those lanterns around the arena. After that, I got to reforging all of my accessories because I was incredibly rich from farming so much. I am, I am so rich. I ended up getting the light modifier on my pickaxe, which means I can swing faster, so I mine faster. We still need to get better weapons for the mechanical bosses, and my favorite weapon for dealing with them is the Daedalus Stormbow. So on day 59, we got to farming mimics once again using all the souls we had. Dealing with them one at a time was really slow, so we just fought all of them at once. I'm gonna be honest, being chased by these many mimics looks cool, but they're really easy to fight. Especially if you have a long arena like this one. We now had the bows we needed, and a lot of greater healing potions that the mimic also dropped. At the farm, I picked up the magic quiver, an accessory dropped by enemies. I also made a house for the nurse to move in, in the arena. We're also gonna be sending our respawn point in this house, so we can instantly teleport back at any point and heal. And because now we had money, I bought a bunch of wires and teleporters, and asked Eris to help me work around the treehouse, so we'd have somewhere to place them. While Eris was still making the base look pretty, I head off to set up teleporters. On day 60, I set up the first teleporter in the Shimmer biome. The second teleporter was connected to the farm. It's really close, but we go there pretty often. The third teleporter was sent next to our tree farm, in the dungeon. This one is gonna be more useful once we deal with the Lunatic Cultists and the Pillars. The fourth one set was on the Sky Island, the one I used for fishing. And since I was already here, I got to farming Wyverns, because despite Eris having a giant harpy feather, she still needed to get Souls of Flight, and I was gonna need them too later on. On day 61, we collected all the souls we needed, and spent all day farming here until I was finally able to get the giant harpy feather for myself. And in case you were curious, here's what farming looks like with a water candle, a battle potion, and during a blood moon. Opa. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> this is a bullet hell. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> Although farming was a bit annoying because each time we dealt with a wyvern, <gasps> a, a new one would immediately replace it. No more wyvern, no more wyvern, no more wyvern, no more wyvern. The destroyer! <laughs> <laughs> it can't reach it. Ah, oh, never mind! <laughs> On day 62, there was a party. Looks like Candy is throwing a party. Now it's not the time, Candy. <laughs> now it's not the time for parties. And because I got tired of farming wyverns, I left. Since we were in the base, we decided to do some more decorating. Placing potted plants, fountains, and other decorations. Eris spoke with the party girl to get cake for us. And I got back to farming for a harpy feather because I still didn't have one. Oh, I got it. I got it. We both now had wings. So after we reforged them... I got back to placing teleporters. This fifth one was placed in a room I made in the Crimson. And since I was already in the Crimson, and we really hadn't managed to obtain that many unicorn horns to make arrows, I got to farming Icor to make Icor arrows instead. The problem is, enemies weren't really showing up, because Eris was also farming for something in the snow biome, where Deerclops showed up. Oh, oh, oh my god, it's Deerclops! <laughs> what? But because we're in hard mode, we're just able to tank all the hits. Here, I'll help. I'm good. How is he hurting you? The ice and the hands. He didn't hurt me at all. What'd he drop? Ah, uh, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. On day 63, we both got to farming Icor. There were also a lot of spider enemies that dropped fangs, and we can use those fangs to make minions. After farming all day, we both made as many arrows as we could, and then... I guess if you're low, just teleport to a nurse, but we got this. The dead nurse? Oh. Hey, we got this. It's easy. I thought it was gonna be harder. Oh god. Oh, talking about... Making this harder. 
Okay, that's fine. Yippee! Oh, you don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> you help? A guy around. Yeah, a little. <laughs> oh, you got it. Oh, over here, over here. Oh, I got a developer set. I got a mechanical wagon piece. We spent day 64 farming the destroyer. Nice. Nice. Dead. Until we were finally able to make a full set of hollow armor. We also had enough hollow left over to make two Excaliburs. Day 65, 66, and 67 were spent sleeping and fighting the mechanical bosses. Oh, we should take out one at a time. Which one are you going for? Shazam. Oh, wait, we separated them. Watch out, watch out, watch out. They really don't like you, huh? I guess not. Same thing, but like take out the hands first. And when he goes to your left, run to the right. And when he goes to your right, run to the left. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Get off it, get off it. Oh my god, he came back. Why is he targeting you? I was right there. That's fine, it's funny. Hold on, I can use all the arrows. Ooh. Ah! Motherfucker, he's gonna kill me! Oh! Nice. And on day 68, since we finally had all the souls from the bosses, we can make the pickaxe axe. But most importantly, I can upgrade my Knight's Edge to the true Knight's Edge. Between day 68 and 72, a lot happened. So it broke my heart when... I haven't been recording. Oh my god. Oh. How many days was that? That was I so many know. days. We did so much. But it was so many days. Oh my god. I don't know how we're going to explain this. I wasn't recording. Uh, I'll try to explain everything that happened. Let's recap. We beat Plantera. Mm -hmm. Just barely, and it was really close, and it was cool, but I guess it doesn't matter. We uh, got some upgrades from the solar eclipse, right? And then I mm -hmm. got my Terra Blade, and then I did like... I spent like two days trying to reforge and spend all our money on it. And you were getting mm -hmm. everything to get a Terra Blade yourself. And I opened all the, all the special chests in the dungeon. We got a bunch of good dungeon drops, which was really lucky, and I wish I was recording for that. What else? We beat the mechanicals? That was today? Yeah, that was today? Did. We haven't beat, we haven't fought Golem because we wanted upgrades and I got the ninja gear and I did reforging. I got the, me the mechanical glove and we got mm. Mothra wings each. Oh my God, that was so much work. Although it was really unfortunate that I didn't record the footage. There is good news because I managed to recreate what the Plantera fight was like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 After taking a small break so I could emotionally recover, we returned and got to fighting the golem. Alright, golem easy as always. We just farmed the golem as many times as we needed to get the pickaxe and the sunstone. And once we obtained the pickaxe, we are able to move the altar and summon the golem in the surface, where it's much easier to fight it. I'll run him down! I'll run him over! I'll run him over! <laughs> er, er, ow! Oh wait, he missed me. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Boosh! <laughs> I was close. All right, we got it. I got it. There it is. <laughs> Mars. I'm not watching where I'm going. On day 74, we summoned the solar eclipse once again, or for the first time. For the first time in the video, properly. We had been farming the solar eclipse so much that at this point, we were getting a lot of banners. At this point, we were only farming because I wanted the deadly sphere staff. But you also argued about yo-yos for a while. Yo-yos are good. No, they're not. You're wrong. You're just wrong. Yo-yos are bad. You're bad. No, I'm good. No, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> After surviving the solar eclipse, I got to cleaning all the gravestones that were left. I was also able to make two celestial stones for the both of us. And right before the end of the day, we were suddenly attacked by the twins. I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> Smoke bomb. <laughs> 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 Shut up! You just sprayed co toxic chemicals in my face and you, you told me to shut up? What's wrong with you? You're gonna kill me! 
What? Why? Why would you? The twins are here. The twins are here. Stop them! Help! A stalemate. We can't hit each other. Oh, never mind. Thank you. You're welcome. On D75, I defeated a few unicorns to get more horns and made a bunch of holy arrows. And after spending all my money reforging my pickaxe, nice. I head to the mushroom biome next to the dungeon. I'm not sure how you're meant to get seeds, so I just kind of break everything until I get them. And right before I was going to start working on something, I accidentally started the Martian invasion. So we spent until day 76 dealing with the alien invasion. I had a much easier time dealing with them than Eris, since I had the Terra Blade and she only had the Excalibur. So I decided to also get her the Terra Blade. From the few saucers we did manage to defeat, we got the Sino Popper and the little alien minions. Hey, we got the minion. Yippee! On day 77, we defeated one more saucer and got the laser machine gun. And with that, ending the invasion. At night, I head back to the skyland that had been completely turned into crimson and replaced it with mushroom. What? What? I just want to build. I wanted somewhere for the truffle NPC to move in and thought a skyland that's mushroom themed would look pretty cool. So we got to placing mud to replace the grass. I accidentally started the Martian invasion again somehow. We replaced the house with mushroom blocks and the crimson with mushroom seeds. And on day 78, we dealt with the Martian invasion again. But since we had been playing so much and I was getting really annoyed of the Martians, we decided to end the recording and Eris went to bed. That means I got to fishing. Since I wasn't able to find another Muramasa in the dungeon, I was gonna have to find one by fishing. So I fished until I got the golden lockbox. This pretty much acts as a chest, giving you a 1 in 7 chance of giving you the Muramasa. And after dealing with the Martian invasion, I opened the box on day 81 and got the Muramasa. <gasps> it's time. So we head to the Crimson, where after collecting everything she needed, she made the Knight's Edge. We then head back to the base, and now she has a Terra Blade of her own. We're reaching the end of the 100 days, but there's still a lot left to do. And now that Eris has a better weapon, we did the Frost Moon. Also, because we kind of wanted to get the Rudolph Mount. Frost Moon time, baby! Ah, uh, Santa's here! Oh my god, he hurts! Whoa! How do we get Rudolph? Oh, from the Queen. I don't huh? think we're gonna get the queen. The frost lady. Oh, there she is! Never mind! Oh, there she is! Oh, never mind! I take back what I said. We need Icor Flask. It would be so helpful. Before we do the next one, let's get Icor Flask. Okay. Nice! Wait, that was only one? He didn't drop anything. Hmm. The frost moon passed. After the frost moon passed, Eris got to collecting Icor, and I got to mining in the jungle. That way, life fruit will have more places to spawn in. And since there was a blood moon the next day, I left the jungle, but I accidentally summoned the Empress of Light. Oh no! What'd you do? Uh, rainbow, rainbow fly, Empress of Light. You summoned her. I did it. <laughs> Should I wait? No, you can join. Join, join, help! I'm scared. Ow! Oh, it's okay, I know how to fight her. Uh oh. Uh, she's on you. Oh, you should probably kill. Um, No, not the nerds! Dude, that wasn't even the boss. It was the random enemy. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Whoa! How did I not get hit there? I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die also. No! Don't die! Don't die! Don't die! Don't die! Please, we're so close! Just run! Oh. No! <laughs> we were so close! It's okay, I have two more butterflies if no! you want to Because it was also a full moon, I spent the rest of the night farming for the moon charm. But didn't have any luck. On day 84, we used all the Icor Eris had collected to make more flasks. These should be enough to last us until the end of the 100 days, and if not, we could always make more. And at night, we decided to face off against the Empress again. Rematch, rematch, rematch. It's time to fight. Literally just walk away from her attacks. It's that simple. Oh my god, the ninja gear and the brain and the hollow armor, it's so good. It's so good.
<laughs> you fool. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got this. I know I do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo, woo. I dodged most of those. Whoa. Nice. Yippee. Oh, infinite flying. Inside. We ended up fighting her twice because we wanted to get her wings, but we didn't get them. Got him. Uh, I didn't get the wings. I got starlight. On day 85, Queen Slime attacked us out of nowhere. She was completely melted, though. Queen Slime. What? Where did she come from? Queen Slime. Ow! Ow, where did she come from? Queen Slime. Okay. Turn my regards to King Slime. Get it? Because that was a thing on the channel for a while, but then I kind of dropped it. Really? Yeah. Oh, I got an achievement. We fought her again and got two mounts. And there is had the hook that lets you teleport. But she didn't tell me at the time. We also decided to do the frost moon today. On day 86, we did the frost moon again. On day 87, I swapped my mimic hook for the hook of dissonance I found in a chest. This one lets you teleport. It's the one Eris got from Queen Slime. I also made a lot of wormhole potions that we could use to teleport to each other. And because neither of us had the max amount of life we can have, we decided to head to the jungle and compete to see who could get more life fruit. There's only so much fruit that spawns in the jungle at a time, so after finding as many as we could, we head back to the base, where we summoned the pumpkin moon. We were also getting a lot of presents from doing the frost moon because the spirit of Christmas remains for a while. Oh, they're dropping presents, that's so weird. The Christmas enemies are dropping presents. Yep. I mean, the Halloween enemies are dropping presents. They're in the spirit. <laughs> of Halloween. It's the nightmare after Christmas. Wait, we barely made it to wave 15. Nice. On day 88, we dealt with the Frost Legion. Although they were kind of pushovers. Mr. Stabby? I didn't hear that. Hey, they're dropping Christmas <laughs> stuff. What the hell? <laughs> This is backwards. I think both times you said it incorrectly. Oh, they're dropping... This time, they were dropping goodie bags. We finished up the day trying to collect as many lace-winged butterflies as we could. Have you seen the bunnies in the Halloween Ooh. outfits? What, you found one? Yep. Oh. Hey. On day 89, we slept until nighttime because we still wanted to collect more lace wings. And we also wanted life fruit to appear in the jungle. For every like, I'll give you a dollar. Nope. <laughs> No, never mind. There, there, there'll be a lot of dollars. <laughs> Let's say this video gets like 32,000 likes because that's the most one of my videos I've ever gotten. I, I, I did not have 32,000 <laughs> 32,000 pennies. I... What if I say for each like it's one penny? That would be $320. <laughs> Eight in pennies. $320. Do you want to do that for each like? I'll give you one penny. I said sure. On day 90, we were still looking for life fruit. I'm terrible right next to the arena. Open it. No. Why? You actually... Oh. You're not going to help me. That's funny. While Eris was dealing with Plantera, I head off to work on a mushroom island. Alright, fine, I didn't. I went back to help her. And then I returned to work on the mushroom island. There wasn't enough mushroom grass for it to count as a mushroom biome though, so I added a few smaller islands that surround it. This was gonna take a while to spread, so I head back to spawn to deal with the goblins. At night, we got back to hunting for lace wings, where Eris ended up catching three, and I didn't find a single one, so I really wasn't being helpful. On day 91, we got to collecting life fruit once more, until we finally reached full health. Once Eris also had full health, we head back to the mushroom island. So I bought a bunch of mushroom solution for the contaminator. I also used the mushroom that spawned here to make shroomite bars. And with the shroomite bars, I made the shroomite digging claws. The fastest pickaxe there is. I also reforged them until I got a bonus to speed on them, making them even faster. At this point, Eris had to leave, so I wanted to farm for the Rod of Discord. But before that, I ended up finding the Celestial Stone that I gave to Eris a while back, that she never ended up equipping, so I took it. And then, got to farming for the Rod of Discord. 
We got it. But this is in single player. But because I also wanted one for Eris, I ended up spending a lot more time farming for another rod. It's alright, we'll get it right away. Watch. I ended up spending a lot of time farming. I'm not gonna count every single day though. So let's just say we're at day 95. This way, we're going to end at exactly day 100. On day 95, we got to hunting for truffles. And this newly converted jungle turned mushroom biome. I also kept accidentally breaking plantera bulbs. So we just had to stop and go deal with her. Oh my uh god. I also spread some mushroom biome in the surface because the crimson was spreading too much. Even though we couldn't find a truffle. You know what a truffle looks like, right? Um. <laughs> we still had the lacewing butterflies to summon the empress. So we fought her twice. Trying to get the wings just because they're a little bit better, I, I think. But we never got them. So on day 96, we got back to truffle worm hunting. Truffle, 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 truffle. This was taking too long, so I went back to the truffle NPC and bought more solution to spray around. Is that a truffle? Hi. Yeah, that's a truffle, that's a truffle! Truffle! <gasps> Hold on, I'll get teleport. I got one! Yippee! There might be a Plantera in three seconds. <laughs> Alright, fine. I won't. <laughs> that's because it hits it with the contaminator. I know. That's what I was thinking. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, trouble, trouble, yeah. trouble, trouble. Ah! Ah, don't run! No! Shield bashing into a truffle. Oh, there's one. <laughs> I got one. After a successful truffle hunting adventure, we head off to fight the Duke. It's Duke. It's Duke time, baby. Remember, we have infinite this... flight. Mm hmm. Uh, it's, it's going pretty well. It's way better than I thought. I guess infinite well, flight does help. It's just Duke Fishron. Uh, yeah, but I never fight him because I was kind of intimidated by him before. We're kind of past the point where he would be too dangerous to us. Are we actually? Yeah. Oh, never mind. I just I mean, took we, a lot of damage. We have infinite flight, good wings. Oh god damn it! Oh, I'm gonna die. Help! Help! No, I don't know how to do with this attack! Ah! Oh, I see. Oh, never mind. You got him, Eris. Heal, 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 heal. <laughs> okay. You got him. Nice. It's over. And we did it again on day 97. Oh my god! He was at 8 HP! <laughs> we didn't get the wings, and the weapons don't really matter because we're about to get the weapons from the pillar event. But at least we fought Duke. At nighttime, we were randomly attacked by the three mechanical bosses. What thing? The thing. Oh, ah. The thing. <laughs> Alright, good luck. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, get this out of my face! Is the nurse dead? Yes. <laughs> oh. When'd you die? Like a few seconds ago. <laughs> right before you had. I forgot I had the raw Discord, so I didn't use it against this guy. Oh, hey. You're fighting a couple hey. guys up here, huh? Uh huh. They surprisingly have done very little damage to me. Oh. Nice. Hey, I got an achievement, even though I've done that before. Whatever. We've done pretty much everything there is, except for the Old Ones army, but I'm not a big fan of that event. After I told Eris to make sure all her accessories were forged, and did some reforging of my own, we head off to face off against the Lunatic Cultist. Let's go fight the Cultist. Say goodbye, everyone! <laughs> audio, audio, audio. Where is he? Hey, hey, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Is he in the wall? Okay, no. I thought he was in the wall. <laughs> How have we really done so much damage? We have really OP weapons. It's not that OP. Like, we're meant to really? have it at this point. Get out of there! <laughs> you... <laughs> 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 
bring him down. I mean, you can get this weapon so, like, early on. We've been doing so much with it. That ugly looking one. Uh oh. Oh god. We spent the rest of day 99 and 100 finishing the game. Or did we? I, I mean, yeah, we, we did. Oh wait, this is an actually good weapon. What the hell? It's good for the solar eclipse. Oh, it's so good. Anything that screws over the solar pillar is good. Oh, it has never been this easy. All right. Oh, God true. damn it. We didn't die a single time this solar pillar. Oh, I love this weapon so much. All right, let's get out of here. Party time's over. Oh, yeah. A tourist. Hey, the next pillar is right in the arena. Yeah, I'll try not to. Oh, it's not that expensive. All right, I'll take ruthless. Oh, a uh, godly second try. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, yeah, watch this. Boom. Ah, oh, shoddy. <laughs> Boom. Shrunk. Ah, godly. Ooh, what did I tell you? Hang on, I'm on my way. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> so far. Oh, my God. Just teleport, please. <laughs> Uh, Teleport, please! Hang on, I'm on my way. There's a backslip. Oh no. It's over. Ah, what hit me? What the hell? Stardust. Mythical! Oh, the mythical one's mine. Ah, uh, we should wait for Nurse. Okay. Oh, never mind. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> it goes so fast when we're both hitting it. I know. All right, got everything. Thing. Let's get out of here. He's here. Ooh. Oh, I didn't do Thanks the same with the tape break. Is this sword actually better than the tape break? Tape break does more damage, but I just prefer it. Hey, we saw 10. <laughs> That's so weird. I saw 10 <laughs> and you saw that. Skeleton World Tour. What? I just got an achievement. Oh! Oh, oh. sorry. I forgot the color. Oh. Are you dodged it? I, I was right at the perfect angle where he wouldn't hit me because his laser was blocked. Oh, yeah. We could just walk in one direction now. Follow me. J just walk him like a little dog. Oh, it's raining! It's raining! Pull out the vet! Woo! <laughs> we are so fast. Ow. Oh my god! I <laughs> passed right under a honey, like the things we built for the honey, right at the perfect moment for a laser to dodge tree. What happened with the big one? With me? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the thing that happened. Oh, we're the best. Watch out, watch out. Wait, 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 wait. Bring him in the base. Bring him in the base. <laughs> Bring him in the base. <laughs> Bring him in. In the yeah, get away. Get away. Get away. Oh. Get away. Get away. <laughs> I'm gonna die. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> get him in here. Everyone, fight. We must unite together <laughs> to defeat the Moon Lord. I can't even see him. Where is he? Come on. Oh, Come God. on, NPCs. Alright. They're not doing anything. We got him. We won. We did it. Oh, I ran out of buffs. Oh, I never used my buffs. Did I die? I got a rainbow brick. I didn't die. We did it. Star Wrath. It's over. It's over. Well, that sure was fun. This video was a nightmare to edit, but I'm very happy with the final product. So I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Take care. Do you want to say anything at the end of the video? <laughs> no. I was going to say bro fits. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? No! No! Why? I'll never forgive you.